We're here today at the Prime Minister's office to deliver a petition with over 7,000 signatures and a petition link to a parliamentary petition which has over 8,500 petitions as well as another petition link which has several thousand signatures all calling for special immigration measures to be immediately implemented to allow all people, uncles, aunts, sisters, brothers, nieces, nephews, parents, spouses who are currently abandoned in Gaza to be able to come to Canada. Canada has done this before. It's done this with the Ukrainian situation. It has done this for people in Lebanon. It has done this for people in Turkey and Syria after the earthquake. There is precedent after precedent that Canada can implement these measures and do it immediately. The question is, why are they waiting? Why that delay? Every moment of delay means that individuals like these children, their lives are at risk. The top picture is Amal. She is three months old, almost as old as this war. She does not have enough milk. She does not have the medication she needs. She does not have the food she needs. She does not have the clean water she needs. She does not have the shelter she needs. She is exposed to the cold of winter like hundreds and hundreds of thousands of other Palestinians in Gaza. Today we have some very courageous community members who have loved ones overseas, okay. Okay. who have lost Everybody's loved okay. ones overseas, and it takes a lot of emotional strength to come out and be here today. I want to introduce someone who has courageously and consistently spoken out for her loved ones and for all Palestinians in danger. Please welcome Isra um, to speak today. Hello, I'm Isra al Safin. Today I found the strength to speak, though dragging my feet. Ever experience grieving your loved ones while juggling the responsibility of motherhood and worrying about the safety of the rest of your family? Have you ever struggled to sleep, waking in the middle of the night, or rushing to open the news in the morning to know what's happening in Gaza? If you haven't seen the news today, let me share the scope with you. Today's attack is on Rafah, the southern point in Gaza Strip. This is supposed to be the safe place for civilians. Sadly, they are dying there due to bombing, lack of food, and medical treatment. Beyond Rafah is the border, which is closed unless you have a foreign passport. Where should my family go? And I repeat that again, where should my family go? I wish I had the wings to go there, fly there, get them out of there to safety. Unfortunately, I don't have superpowers. What I do have is the strength to come and continue advocating for them. But how many times must I do that so the government to do finally agree to help them? I urge you to share this message, amplifying the voices of those suffering in Gaza. Let's collectively call on our government to take an action and provide assistance to people in Gaza and Rafah. Together we can make a difference. Together we can bring the attention to the urgent need for a resolution to this crisis. Together we can bring our families to safety. Thank you. Thank you, Isra. Our next speaker is someone who two and a half years ago stood in this very spot as her family was being bombed in Gaza. 
and she pleaded and she lobbied and she pushed and she got on a plane to Egypt and said to Canada, if you don't bring my family here, I will go get them myself and I will wait at the Rafa crossing. Her kids and her husband are here, but she still has much family left behind. Please welcome Jahan Kunu to talk about what that's been like and what she's currently facing. People in Gaza, they don't have any place, any safe place to stay. But my family left from Gaza City in the north to the south, looking for a safe place to stay. But unfortunately, they have no place to stay, no safe area. They are now in the middle, and the bombing in the middle. Other family member in Rafah, and today they bomb Rafah. Not only today, every day since the war started. I urge the Canadian government to take action and to, to issue them an immediate visas to cross the border. Whenever we contact any member of parliament, we contact the media, we raise our voices, we hear the same thing. Rafah border is controlled with other entities and it's even hard for us to evacuate Canadian. So they are, you need to contact Global Affairs Canada, you need to contact other, other departments. So we, don't, we, are not, we don't know who to contact, we don't know what to do. We urge the Canadian government, we urge the immigration to issue immediate emergency visas for our families in Gaza, for our parents, for our siblings, for our nieces. We, really, we, we can't sleep at night. We are suffering every day. We woke up every day looking at the news, checking our WhatsApp, our Facebook, just to see if, if they are still alive. No connection, lack of food, lack of water. No electricity, the life is terrible. No basic human need is available now in Gaza Strip. We are so worried about, about our families. We need immediate action now. Thank you. Thank you, Jahan, and may your family and Isra's family and all families be able to reunite with those emergency visas. We brought 150,000 Ukrainians here. It was the right thing to do. It showed that the system works if you have a certain religion or a certain background. It's time to stand up and say, Melanie Jolie says that Gaza is the worst place on earth to be right now. She said that in October. That's over two and a half months ago, and we all know how much worse it is now. If Canada says it's a horrible place to be, Canada should be working night and day to get loved ones out. Yes. Canada uses this ridiculous definition and says only immediate family members. Well, those of you who get together during the holidays, is the fact that your uncle or your aunt or your cousin is not a quote-unquote immediate family member? Does that mean they're not welcome to celebrate? That they are not welcome to celebrate Eid? That they are not welcome to celebrate Hanukkah or Christmas? No! Family is family, and that must be respected. We'd like to close today's rally. We're going to be walking around the corner with a petition to Justin Trudeau and Mark Miller calling for these emergency measures. But before we do that, we'd like to spend a few minutes sharing some of the most beautiful poetry ever written by Palestinian poets. And our first poem today comes from Jen, uh, who's driven over an hour to get here today. Jen, please come forward and, and share one of those poems. Thank you. So this is a poem uh, from Farah Chama. She's a, a poet and performer. She's known for her spoken word performances where she combines morality, acting, and live music. She's from Palestine. She's lived in Brazil, France, the UAE, and the United Kingdom. I am no Palestinian. I am no courageous, fearless, valorous, gallant, proud, adventurous, selfless patriot. I am a soul in exile, expressing my thoughts in all languages but mine, 
Hi, I am Palestinian. Salut, je suis Palestinienne. I cut my mother tongue in half. Palestinian poet Rafif Ziadeh was right when she said, allow me to speak my Arab tongue before they occupy my language as well. Well, to that I must add, allow me to be the Arab that I am. Allow me my right to learn, to travel, to pray. Allow me to walk through any foreign street without having to feel this shame, without having to think twice about my clothes, my face, my name, or the visa I had to work day and night for the claim. Because at the end of the day, I am not the one to blame for Bin Laden, 9-11, and all your absurd schemes and games. I am but a soul in exile. I am in no hall of fame. I have to opt to be someone I am not, just to fit in your fame. Despite the agony I went through, despite the struggles I overcame, despite the diplomas, the degrees, the awards I acclaim, I am still no Palestinian. No matter how many I love Palestine stickers I stick on my car, no matter how many times I cry over Gaza and argue over the Israeli settlements, no matter how many times I curse the Zionists, blame the media, and swear at the Arab leaders, I am still no Palestinian. Even if I memorize the names of all the Palestinian cities, even if I recite Mahmoud Darwish's poetry and draw handala on my walls, even as I stand here tonight in front of you all, I am no Palestinian and I might ever, never, ever be. And that's exactly what makes the Palestinian in me. Thank you, Jen. That was lovely. Our next reader is Laurel Smith, and she's going to read The Deluge and the Tree. And Santa is going to take over the live stream. When the hurricane swirled and spread its deluge of dark evil onto the good green land, they gloated. The western skies reverberated with joyous accounts. The tree has fallen. The great trunk is smashed. The hurricane leaves no life in the tree. Had the tree really fallen? Never. Not with our red streams flowing forever. Not while the wine of our thorn limbs fed the thirsty roots. Roots alive, tunneling deep, deep into the land. When the tree rises up, the branches shall flourish green and fresh in the sun. The laughter of the tree shall leaf beneath the sun, and birds shall return. Undoubtedly, the birds shall return. The birds shall return. Thank you, Fadwa Tukam. Thank you. Our next poetry reading comes from someone who is working 24-7 the past two and a half months to try and end this brutality, this inhumanity, this hatred. Please welcome our wonderful elf, Chelsea, uh, who's going to be reading a poem for us as well. Thank you, Santa. Uh, happy to be here, share the space with folks at uh, the Prime Minister's office, hopefully, hopefully he listens. Poem was called Hamza by Fadwa Tukan. Hamza was one of my hometown's ordinary men who did manual labor for bread. When I saw him recently, the land still wore its morning dress in the solemn, windless silence, and I felt defeated. But Hamza the unextraordinary said, Sister, our land's throbbing heart never ceases to pound, and it perseveres, enduring the unendurable, keeping the secrets of mounds and wounds, this land spreading cactus spikes and palms and also births, freedom fighters. Thus, our land, my sister, is our mother. Days passed and Hamza was nowhere to be seen, but I felt the land's belly heaving in pain. At 65, Hamza's a heavy burden on her back. Burn down his house, some commandant screamed, and slap his son in the prison cell. As our town's military, military ruler later explained, this was necessary for law and order. That is, an act of love 
for peace. Armed soldiers surrounded Hans's house. The coiled serpent completed its circle. The bang at the door came with an ultimatum. Evacuate, damn it. So generous with their time, they said. You can have an hour, yes. Hansa threw open a window. Face to face with the blazing sun, he yelled defiantly. Here in this house, I and my children will live and die for Palestine. Hamza's voice echoed over the hemorrhaging silence. An hour later, with impeccable timing, Hamza's house came crashing down. As its rooms were blown sky high, and its bricks and mortars burst, till everything settled, bearing a lifetime's memories of labor, tears, and happier times. Yesterday I saw Hamza walking down one of our town's streets, Hamza, the unextraordinary man who remained as he always was, unshakable in his determination. Thank you. Thank you, Chelsea. Does everyone have a song sheet? If, if you don't, uh, can we just pass those along? And Laurel's going to lead us in a new rendition of Silent Night, which we'd like all of you to join. dream for the children of Gaza. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, all the children asleep in their beds, dreams of We sing. have a, a future right there, just waking up. Welcome. Six months old. We'll be like this. And then we'll just sing the second one, and then we'll go over to the to the other side of the building. So this is to the tune of Prayer and Taco, if you know that, everyone. Stop the bombing, stop the war. Cease fire now, cease fire now. Gaza's eyes depend on it. Everybody calls for it. Cease fire now, cease fire now. Special measures, entry visas. Issue now, issue now. Sail all of the families, sail all of the families. Bring them here, bring them here. Simple. That's what we need, right? Everyone? Thank you all for coming today. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Okay. It's, it's very difficult to always be doing this. Oh, sorry. Especially for those of you who have families and loved ones overseas. As this Ross said earlier today, every time you talk about this, it just brings back that flood of memories, that flood of feelings. And we ask that people watching this think about what it might be like if you had loved ones over there. On December the 24th, I'll be seeing a lot of your loved ones because I know how to get to the Rafa crossing. It's very easy. You just show a little bit of kindness and love and peace in your heart. And that's all we are calling for. And part of showing that love in your heart means opening your heart issuing a policy and making sure that all who need to get out of Gaza and want to get out of Gaza, because you know what? No one really wants to leave their home. We know that it's unfortunately the goal of the bombers to try and push everyone away. And there are those who will stay until the very end. We know that. 
But people should have the option to come for safety just as Ukrainians have come for safety, just as Syrians have come for safety, just as people from around the world have come for safety. Let's give them that opportunity because every day that we fail to do that means their potential loss. We're now just going to shut down the sound system, put it into our cart, and we're going to go around to the drop box and drop off this petition. And I'd like to see if Jahan and Isra would like to present the petition, if you're comfortable with that, and Santa will do that with you. And you're doing that on behalf of families who are watching this live feed and uh, who are hoping there's a WhatsApp group with over 800 families in your situation. And we know that's just the tip of the iceberg. So let's embrace all of you as we deliver this very strong message. We need special immigration measures now. Thank you for being here. We're just gonna switch over and then we'll go over to the other side.